Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your weekly gaming news roundup. And this week we have a whole host of news about the new Borderlands game and much more fun stuff like that. First of all, let's go over the new monthly games for April for PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live. On PlayStation Plus, you will be getting The Search and also Conan Axles. And as well as that this will be the very first month that PS3 and PS Vita will no longer be getting free games included with their PlayStation Plus subscription making PlayStation Plus completely useless on both consoles. And if you're kind of honest about it, I don't think the amount of people that still play PS3 and P especially PS Vita is maybe warranted. It's, it's, it feels a bit, I guess, nasty in a way that they're doing this because they're decreasing the value that you get for PlayStation Plus, but they're not decreasing the price that you pay for it. So on Xbox Live, you get Techno Menacer and Outcast Second Contract. And for Xbox 360, you get Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 2. Todd Howard confirms that neither Elder Scrolls 6 nor Starfield will be at the Bethesda's E3 press conference. So for those who were expecting to see some more about Elder Scrolls 6, you're shit out of luck. Bullets Storm is making its way to the Nintendo Switch in the form of Bulletstorm Duke of Switch Edition, which is coming this summer. Unfortunately, there's no exact release date for it, but you know the summer is pretty close. So if you have a Nintendo Switch and you always wanted to play Bulletstorm, now you can do so. Then rumors circulating that Resident Evil 3 Remake is not developed by Capcom. It's being said that it's not what a lot of people are probably going to expect and that the game isn't developed by Capcom Division 1 at all. The game is looking to be very interesting and it's also being said that you will be able to see the game a lot sooner than people are expecting. It's an interesting move because I don't know why they would you know, choose to go for a different developer than the one that made the Resident Evil 2 re remake, which by the way, was a fantastic game, and if you haven't checked it out, it is definitely worth doing so. In more announcement news, Apple Arcade has been announced and it's coming fall 2019, and if you're meaning, hey, what Apple Arcade? The one that made the iPhones and stuff like that. So basically what the trailer is promising is that you can play console grade games on your iPad. Now, this is basically one big indie game platform that is being hosted by Apple. And I guess it's an interesting thing to see that people are going to be able to create their own games and publish them on the Apple Arcade and hopefully get some more exposure that way. But I think the best way to describe it really is the idea at Xbox program that Microsoft is doing. This is probably some Something that is similar but we'll see how everything is going to turn out with that then some quick trailer news Mortal Kombat 11 got a brand new trailer called the old school versus new school trailer days gone got a story trailer streets of rage 4 has also got a gameplay teaser trailer was young youngblood got its first official story trailer and also a release date attached to that as well the game will be coming out on July 26th and it will be a complete co-op experience either you'll be playing with an AI companion or with a friend and also included in the deluxe edition that will be coming with a buddy pass which is in a way kind of the same thing as you had in a way out where you were able to play with each other without actually owning the game definitely a very nice incentive for people to play this with a friend especially because the deluxe edition is only 40 bucks which also comes with some cosmetic bonuses including a cyborg skin pack which turns the power suits and weapons into titanium alloy versions then in division 2 news a brand new content update will be coming on April 5th, which will include title Basin, which is the Stronghold, and also World Tier 5. So for those who have been grinding out the Division 2 and are now kind of waiting until they can access World Tier 5, you're only going to have to wait until April 5th until you can do so. They also released a brand new patch, which should fix the co-op scaling issues alongside of the reduction of flickering and distortion effects in menus. So if you have uh, been wanting to play with your co-op buddy, which is a lot higher rank then you shouldn't have too much of an issue right now with getting one shot how much an effect this has haven't had a chance to check that out myself yet but i'm still uh, casually and slowly working my way up to level 30 so i can start the end game which i seem to have been doing at the right time because april 5th is when world tier 5 is going to be so my progression to the end game is going to be a lot smoother without any stops 
And now it's time for a whole lot of Borderlands news. So let's get this started. Borderlands 1 will be coming and making its way to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on April 3rd, which is on Wednesday. And PC players will be getting a free upgrade for those who already own the game. They're updating the game to support 4K. You can also get four player couch co-op. And of course the usual co-op through the internet is going to be a thing as well. And the same applies for the Handsome Collection, which was released a couple of years ago. This will also be getting a fresh coat of paint in the form of 4K as well. So if you haven't played any of the Borderlands games just yet, now is the perfect time to do so. Personally, I'll be picking up Borderlands 1 so I can start from the very start and make my way through all the first three Borderlands games to prepare for Borderlands 3 because I've been putting off that series for way too long and for what I've played, I've always enjoyed it. Now, the big news, Borderlands 3, it's finally been announced and it's looking like it's... Uh, it's, it's looking rather spazzy. It's promising a billion guns and, and a whole host of other things. And I have to say that, you know, I always liked the art style of Borderlands. I really liked the gameplay from what I've played of Borderlands. And, you know, it is, as they claim, the original looter shooter. So I'm, uh, I'm quite curious to see how it's going to pan out. A lot of Borderlands fans, I'm sure, are thrilled to hear about all this stuff. And hopefully they're up for a treat because it's been a long, long time since Borderlands the pre-sequel came out, which I've heard is not being received very well. So I think it's more fair to say that it's been a very long time since Borderlands 2 came out. As far as we've seen so far, there hasn't been an official release date announced just yet, but they're saying that there's going to be more announced on April 3rd as well, which ironically enough is also the release date of the remastered Borderlands on PS4 and Xbox One. So hopefully then we'll hear when exactly the game is going to come out or maybe even some additional details about what we can expect in Borderlands 3. And then I want to end the video on paying some respect to the founder of Take Two, Ryan Brand, who sadly passed away at the age of 49. Of course, as a Rockstar fan, as someone who is a you know big fan of what they do over there, you know without Take Two there wouldn't be a Rockstar. And Rockstar also tweeted out a little statement on Twitter from Sam Hauser, which is of course the as uh, you know one of the founders of Rockstar Games. Uh, saying, I was devastated to hear about the news of Ryan Brand's passing. Ryan shared our vision for the potential future of video games, and he took a chance by allowing us to create Rockstar Games under the Take Two label. His early support gave us the freedom to develop and produce the kinds of games we believed in, and Ryan's efforts for us and others helped shape the industry as we know it. On behalf of everyone at Rockstar Games, my love and thoughts go out to Ryan's family and friends in this difficult time. So obviously, you know, I didn't know the man, but I did find it important to at least show some respect to the passing of the founder of Take Two, uh, because, you know, if we're going to be honest about this, without him, there wouldn't be a GTA, there wouldn't be a lot of things, because there simply wouldn't be support to even create Rockstar Games in itself. So I felt this was the best position to uh, discuss this uh, inside of the video, because, you know, doing that in the middle of everything all happy and stuff wouldn't feel right. So rest in peace, Ryan, your efforts for the gaming industry will always be remembered and recognized. But with all that said and done, thank you all so very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all later.